In on a Saturday afternoon, uh, we've gathered you all here today uh, in order to provide you with an operational briefing by Vice Admiral Bill Gortney, who is the uh, director of the Joint Staff. Admiral Gortney will update you on Operation Odyssey Dawn, uh, the International Coalition's military enforcement of UN Security Council Resolution 1973. Uh, the Admiral is kind enough to join us this afternoon. He'll make a very brief statement and then offer you all the, the opportunity to ask a few questions, but obviously he has operational matters to attend to, so this will not be a lengthy engagement. With that, Admiral. Good afternoon. Thank you for coming, everyone. As you know, we're on the leading edge of a coalition military operations designed to enforce United Nations Security Council Resolution 1973 in Libya. The goals of these initial operations are essentially twofold. First, to prevent further attacks by regime forces on Libyan citizens and opposition groups, especially in and around Benghazi. And second, to degrade the regime's capability to resist the no-fly zone we are implementing under that United Nations resolution. To that end, earlier this afternoon, over 110 Tomahawk cruise missiles fired from both U.S. and British ships and submarines struck more than 20 integrated air defense systems and other air defense facilities ashore. On the slide to my left... Uh, back one slide, please. On the slide to my left, you can see the rough locations of the military targets struck. You will notice that most of them are on or near the coast, a fact which made their destruction vital to the enforcement of a no-fly zone, since so much of the air activity we have seen and so much of the regime's military efforts have been in this part of the country. These strikes were carefully coordinated with our coalition partners. The targets themselves were selected based on our collective assessment that these sites either pose a direct threat to the coalition pilots or through use by the regime pose a direct threat to the people of Libya. Because it is night over there, it will be some time before we have a complete picture of the success of these strikes. I want to stress, however, that this is just the first phase of what will likely be a multi-phased military operation designed to enforce the United Nations resolution and deny the Libyan regime the ability to use force against its own people. This is an international military effort, urged by the Libyan people themselves and by other Arab nations. We are joined by several other allied partners and are committed to supporting their efforts. Indeed, we continue to receive commitments of support and participation and leadership from both Arab and European partners. In these early days, the operation will be under the operational command of General Carter Ham, Commander U.S. Africa, Africa Command, and the commander of Joint Task Force Odyssey Dawn, which is the name of this operation, is Admiral Sam Locklear, who is embarked on board USS Mount Whitney in the Mediterranean. We anticipate the eventual transition of leadership to a coalition commander in the coming days. That said, the U U.S. military has and will continue to use our unique capabilities to create the conditions from which we and our partners can best enforce the full measure of the U.N. mandate. Our mission right now is to shape the battle space in such a way that our partners may take the lead in both execu in execution. As the President has said, we are not going to use force to go beyond a well-defined goal, specifically the protection of the civilians in Libya. And with that, I will take your questions. Lita. Hi, Admiral. Lolita Baldor with AP. Can you give us a little bit more clarity on the strikes and, and the targets, including perhaps just a bit more on what exactly U.S ships, submarines, et cetera, did. And was there anything beyond the cruise missiles that has that is being done by the United States? Uh, uh, both from uh, U.S. Uh, ships and submarines and a uh, U.K. submarine, a uh, total of uh, 110, uh, maybe 112 uh, Tomahawk land attack cruise missiles, once again targeted specifically at taking down the critical nodes of the integrated air defense system, which includes surface-to-air missile sites, early warning sites, uh, key communication nodes. Uh, uh, located up on the slide to my left, you'll see uh, many of them, uh, most of them are in the western part of the country. That's where those critical nodes are located, and that's why we targeted them there. But it does build, uh, give us the ability, um, specifically with taking down the long-range uh, uh, surface stairs, the SA-5s, taking them down and then the C2 architecture uh, that goes with that opens up as broad a space as possible for the no-fly zone. Tony? 
Uh, just on, on the missiles themselves, these are, these are those new generation tactical tomahawks. It was a mixture of our old tomahawks and the, and the newer tactical tomahawk. The new ones allow you to loiter over airspace and take pictures actually before they drop in. Uh, not right? pictures. Uh, they have. They give us the ability to uh, loiter and then we can sh uh, shoot them a target and they will go to the target. But in this particular mission, we use them as we have uh, just as a, uh, one of the older tomahawks. Well, they're, they're clearing the airspace basically for the non-stealthy fighters to go in or for jammers to go in. They, they uh, allow us to penetrate um, uh, a high, what we would call a medium to high threat without putting air crew at risk. Create the conditions for manned aircraft. And uh, has the no-fly zone uh, enforcement begun, and what coalition members will enforce that? Will U.S. jets be in the air enforcing At this point, we are creating the conditions to be able to set up the no-fly zone. Uh, and once we have established and confirmed that the conditions are right, uh, then we will move forward into the next uh, one of the next phases of the, of the campaign. So it has not yet begun in enforcement? Uh, it, that's, a, that's a tough one to say based on how you call – um, do we have airplanes patrolling uh, over Libya to enforce the no-fly zone? No, ma'am, we do not. But I would say we are beginning uh, that because we're setting the conditions to be able to, uh, to reach that state. Chris. Uh, Admiral, will Colonel Gaddafi's uh, tanks and heavy artillery also be targeted? Going uh, forward? I'm not uh, – I'm going to have to limit my discussion today to the actions that were taken thus far, and uh, I'm not going to be able to discuss potential future operations. Kevin. Uh, Admiral, you said that the, protecting the population of Benghazi was one of the goals, but I don't see that as one of the strike uh, targets on, on your map. Why is that? That's correct, and that's where I was talking about where are the critical nodes of that uh, uh, integrated air and missile defense system. At this particular point, um, uh, uh, Gaddafi is uh, predominantly uh, it lives in Tripoli, and you'll see that's where the most robust IADs are. But the no-fly zone that we want to enforce encompasses both east and west, and so we went after that first, this this uh, wave, after the, the most critical part. So will the second wave then go to Benghazi? I'm, I'm not going to talk about future operations. Jennifer. Are U.S. forces required, or have they been used to help with the targeting on the ground? Have, have U.S. forces been on the ground to help with the targeting? There's been, been no U.S. forces on the ground to do the targeting. We, we don't require uh, uh, people on the ground to develop targets for the target. Elizabeth. Uh, can you tell us what, sub, what submarines and ships the uh, missiles came from, the U.S.? Uh, I'm going to have to provide you at another time. I don't have that in front of me right now, ma'am. Just to be clear, there are, there are no um, U.S. aircraft involved at this point? In no, no U.S. aircraft uh, overland at this time, no, ma'am. And, and no involved in airstrikes right now? Not at this particular time, no, ma'am. Uh, Admiral, are any U.S. aircraft providing refueling support for any uh, aircraft involved in this event? Uh, I would anticipate that we will be providing that. You know, we bring uh, unique capabilities uh, in command and control and logistics. So part of that, uh, we bring a very large uh, uh, tanker force to do that, and we will be contributing that now and in the future. There. Um, when did this start in relation to when the French launched their fighter jets? Was this after they had launched, before they launched? Do you anticipate launches will continue? And when you talk about critical nodes, is Qaddafi's upper echelon command and control considered a critical node of his air defense? Uh, for, first, first question. When did when did the Tomahawks first get launched? In uh, comparison to when the French it was after launched? the French after the French uh, uh, flew their particular missions, the Tomahawks were launched. About a time of flight of about an hour from launch to impact. First impact was at fifteen hundred Eastern Standard Time. I'm not going to answer the second question because it deals to future operations and your last question. Was when you talked about you were targeting uh, command and control or um, uh, critical nodes, is Qaddafi's upper echelon command and control considered one of those critical nodes that you attacked? Uh, no, we're focusing on this command and control of the integrated air and missile defense system. I anticipate, but do the U.S. intend to participate to the no-fly zone with the uh, attack aircraft? I'm not, at, uh, I'm not at liberty to talk potential future operations. Yes, ma'am. Can you tell me uh, which Arab nations are part of the Allied partners? Uh, right now, um, of, of the coalition, the countries that have asked us to mention their names, of course, the U.S., U.K., French, uh, Italy, and Canada, the other countries uh, uh, have asked for them, they want to be able to make the announcement, uh, and it's the same for the Arab countries as well. We're going to go ahead and let them make the announcement. Great. 
Greg, do you have anything? Uh, da, 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 da. Um, no, I'm okay. Louis? Uh, sorry, uh, there are also electronic uh, planes that uh, can do electronic jamming of the uh, integrated missile sites. Was that the technology used during these strikes? Uh, for this particular strike, uh, what we would call that support package of uh, electronic attack uh, was not required in order to get the cruise missiles into their targets. Is that AWACS? Is that what you mean for this? Or? Well, we have uh, aircraft that jam electronics, the early warning JCI. We, we haven't had to use those. That's one of the uh, uh, benefits of using the Tomahawk cruise missiles. And what was the purpose of the French mission? Uh, you, you're in, in have to, to I'm not here. I'm not able to speak to the French uh, uh, mission objectives. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Total number of targets again? Uh, it'll be over 20 targets. Jim? How will you assess the damage to this? Will you send like a global hawk or satellite uh, imagery from this? To yeah, a bomb damage assessment is going to take uh, a little bit. You know, after being in uh, combat in Iraq and Afghanistan where we have predators, reapers, you know, full motion video, uh, we don't have that in this particular, in the contested airspace, so that's why we had to drop the IADs in order to do that. We'll be able to use uh, a Global Hawk um, now that, uh, once uh, we have confirmed that the SA-5s are down, um, and then uh, we'll use the traditional uh, national technical means. Yeah, have you know? I just want to, to, to be clear, this is a U.S.-led operation, but in the hours leading up today, there's some indications or talk to, to try to talk that down. We are on the, the leading edge of, uh, of coalition operations where the United States, uh, under General Ham uh, and Africa C Command, is in charge. He's in command of this at this point, and in the coming days, uh, we intend to transition it to a coalition command. Elizabeth? Can you specify how many British uh, ships were involved compared to the U.S. ships? Uh, we had uh, one uh, British submarine. And the rest were all U.S.? Yes, ma'am. And the number of that? The uh, I don't have that in front of me in the exact numbers, but... Hey, a couple more minutes here. Tony? How, how sophisticated was this air defense system compared to Iraq's, Iran's, and you know, even v going back to Vietnam, you, you study these systems, and I think the public would like a sense of that. Um, uh, uh, this is a integrated air and missile defense system, uh, much like uh, the one that uh, Iraq had and the surrounded Baghdad, uh, built on uh, older uh, Soviet uh, technology, uh, um, but still uh, good capability. On um, two things, the, the bomb damage assessment, do you have a rough idea? Will that take hours or days? <coughs> I would say between hours and days. And is it fair? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's going to take us anywhere to from six to twelve hours to get this based on um, assessing whether or not uh, the SA five sites are down that we could then move uh, Global Hawk in and then uh, the other national technical means to collect and then assess. Is it fair to say that the no fly zone enforcement probably won't begin until the bomb damage assessment is complete? I'm not able to talk about uh, uh, specifics of future operations. More hands as we go on. So let's try to get control of this cup. Uh, oh. let, let's do Chris and Matthew and Nathan, and then we're done. Would, would you, Admiral, would you consider this period that we're in right now to be a pause in that no more strikes are going on until the assessment? No, we're going? in the first phase of a multi phase uh, operation. Matthew? So, so, so I, wouldn't, I wouldn't specifically call, call it a pause. But, but so strikes are continuing even before the assessment. It's the data. first phase of a multi-phase operation. Uh, at this point, you said it was a U.S.-led operation, but uh, at which level, how do you coordinate with coalition partners? Is it uh, in Stuttgart? Within the, the, with, the command, or? Yes, within Africa Command and then uh, on Mount Whitney, on uh, um, where the JTF commander is, we have our coalition partners embedded into the staff that help do with the planning, execution, and assessment of the coalition operations, uh, much like we do around the world. I think I promised that Nathan would be the last one. Admiral, could you just give us a sense of the total number of ships that are attached to this JTF uh, Odyssey Dawn or the number of U.S. vessels versus coalition? I, 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 I apologize. I should have that information that I don't have in front of me, and we're going to have to get that for you. But we'll be able to provide that. All right. Thank you, Admiral Courtney. As uh, operations develop and uh, events warrant, we will come back to you and uh, keep you updated as, uh, as things go on. But thank you all for coming in on, on this weekend.